Hey, top of the morning to you. It looks like it's just me and uh, one other person, and I love it. I'm just uh, I'm here. It's a it's a it's a holiday morning. It's uh, July fourth. Uh, time to be out getting the grill ready, and maybe family's coming over. Maybe you're just sitting quietly today, enjoying. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and read this because I read it in the mornings, so and people can watch it when they watch. Uh, especially on Tuesday mornings, I, I go back to these journals. I have some other readings that I do to every day when I get up and go have a cup of tea. I uh, head down to my table, and, uh, and that's where I hang out a little bit. So thanks for jumping on this morning. I'm going to be here for a second. I've sketched this once before, and I went ahead and did a little pencil sketch before I came on the air just, uh, just to get the water in there and, uh, and build this up a little bit. Um, I don't do... Uh, people features very well. I, I know I don't, so it's not like I'm trying to and go like, hey, you know, that, those are some strange looking feet that dude is um, is wearing there. And you go, yeah, they are. And uh, these probably are sandals that tied on. They weren't like sandals that we had have today. Anyway, so I'm just drawing this little bit of a sandal there and creating a um, um, a little bit of water, just some feet walking on the water. And that's going to be uh, the story that I'm going to talk about today. So uh, I, I decided to start where we left off last week. That's always a good place, right? And I was just doing a, a little people. If you remember, I finished with doing these little bitty shadows of people over here like this. Um, look, they are not as important as the story, but I build up enough of a piece of art that reminds me of the story. And so I'm thinking that all this took place. Um, the reason I'm thinking that is because I do a little cultural research. I dig into the background a little bit and I find out, and sometimes I'll even go and I'll find a map and I'll look at the, I'll look at Israel and I'll look at the Sea of Galilee because a lot of this happened around the Sea of Galilee. So good morning to you this morning. Thanks for being on. And um, if you're catching this at a later date, uh, these are supposed to be the Judean heel sides over here. I'm just going to grab a big old brush. Okay, not a big old brush. I'm only just going to grab a number. Yeah, in fact, that's a tiny brush. I'll grab a number or something here. Is this a seven, six or seven? I'm going to throw just a little more green up on the heel sides here. I want to tell you one thing about Israel. When it rains in and in the lower lands of Israel, especially just even around the northern end of Galilee, you get some serious... Um, it's brown a lot, but man, when it rains, the grass says hello, and it jumps up and, and waves. Um, so it's pretty awesome what happens when when that takes place. So these people are sitting on this hillside, according to the Bible, and I could put a little blue sky up here just to tie that in, maybe a little bit. So I'll, I'll create little things like this that just finish the scene for me. And you can see how just with my pen lines, there's nothing, I'm not trying to, make an, a, a work of art here that stands um, critique or scrutiny from art people saying, well, I don't know. Those don't look like little people. They look like this little marks that he's made with his pen. You know, that's exactly what they are. But when you look at it and you read the story, you realize that, oh, there is a boat out there. And um, it's a little bit of a uh, probably made out of the local wood. Not a whole lot of wood in Israel other than small trees. There's not big deciduous trees like we have. And for you people who live out West and Oregon and places like that, I mean, your, your trees are just like they're lumber trees. You know, we have some Oak and pine that, that get big around here, some poplar trees, but that's soft wood. Um, so I don't know what this boat was. I know the ark was made out of uh, what gopher wood. I don't even know what that is. Sounds like something that would uh, hold up in water. <laughs> beaver wood all right so here we go and then i didn't even finish the fruit bowl so i'm going to come back today and finish this fruit bowl or excuse me fruit bowl bread and fish see if i don't paint it it looks like it has fish in there then and there's some gills right there and then maybe this lip of this fish here somebody did a fish the other day uh denise or so uh, it was just phenomenal um and i'm i'm, I'm looking at some uh paintings that you guys do that have just blow my mind and I want to talk to you I'm gonna do a short little show today to record pieces of it for patreon for um, when I'm done here and it just has to do about art principles also so I'm gonna grab another cup of tea and come on and record a short show this morning about some homework for the next two weeks for 
the people who are doing Think Like an Artist. But so that'll that'll be on in a little bit. But what I want you to do um, is we stopped here. And if you notice at the end of John 4, John 6, it says, John 6, 4, comes down to verse 16, Jesus walks on water. Uh, that would have been a good headline to lead off with, don't you think? Can you imagine uh, the, the Post uh, getting that or the, you know, the local paper town, the local paper in the town where you live in, it says, uh, good, good lead story is man walks on water. You got to go, okay, okay, what's the trick? What's the trick? So this comes right after they're in Bethsaida, not Bethsaida, but Beth yeah, Bethsaida, Bethsaida. I get Bethsaida and Bethesda mixed up. I don't know how I do that. I'm certainly, um, they're up on the northern end of the Galilee, according to my map, and across just across the top of the water there, in a little short distance, is uh, Capernaum. Been going that way the way I see Israel in my brain, but. When you look at a map, um, so here's what happens. Uh, there were 5,000, more than 5,000 in number. And so, and, and they had families. And so he talks to Philip. We talked about this, about, could you find some bread for these people to go eat? Because, I mean, they're going to be here. It's nighttime's coming. And for heaven's sakes, can you help them eat a little bit? And Philip's thinking, do you realize how much money that would cost? to get money to go and find a town and, and get some food prepared and bring it back for these people. What in the name of lands is wrong with you, Jesus? You know, he didn't say that, but you know, he probably felt that in his mind and in his heart. He's going like, what is he telling me to do? And so um, basically he's telling them, we're out of food and these people are going to need some food. I put a little green in that fish there. Uh, the fish that come out of the Sea of Galilee are all kinds of fish, but really the main eating fish over there is a tilapia. And so, um, and I've had it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good fish. It's a, it's a freshwater fish. Um, and so see how long that took me to do this little, uh, little thing here. And I could bring this out just so you would want a fish tail up here. I could create a little fish tail like this coming back in. And going back in that way and turn this fin that way. And now you have a real little looking fishtail out there just with a little glue. Take some of that out. Let it dry. Anyway, put some marks on the bread here just like this. That looks like a pie. We don't want that to happen. And then maybe splatter a little buff uh, in there. So this is what I do to make these little sketches work for me. Um, if you spend too much time on them... Um, I'm just going to tell you this. If you spend too much time on your art, you've probably not digested enough of the word. And that's what this is about. So let's jump over because here's the headline. Jesus walks on the water. When evening came, the disciples went down to the sea and they got into the boat. So they fed the people. They picked up all these 12 baskets of extra pieces. Maybe they packed some with them and said, whoa, got food going home. Hey, uh, we're going over to Capernaum, which is across the way, just a few miles in the water. They get into the boat, uh, and maybe there's a couple of them already standing in the boat uh, here. And so there they are, a little. And so um, they're out there, so they're getting ready to put up the sail. And uh, but in this case, they're going to have to paddle because it's night, and it's uh, there's there's uh, um, there's enough in there for six, seven, eight people maybe in this boat. They're pretty good sized boats that they still sort of have found. They found a boat there. Uh, near uh, near Tiberias, it's in a little museum there, and it's really remarkable to see. It's quite a quite a large vessel, uh, all handmade and uh, wood that had been probably brought down from the mountains. It's fabulous. They started across the sea to Capernaum, and it was now dark, and Jesus had not come to them yet. Okay, so he said to them, and he says this over in Mark and also in Matthew earlier on. He says, "Hey." Um, I need to be by myself for a while. And and they had gotten used to that because every time that he did one of these miracles or every time that he was with a lot of people teaching, it, it just takes your energy, I'm sure, especially if there are thousands of people and you're speaking and you're thinking, uh, okay, let's, let's treat this with great uh, importance because these are the people that I've come to talk to. And so here's what happens. He, uh, 
he speaks to him and then he says, you all go on and I'll, I'll walk around the northern end and I'll catch you later. And they had plans in Capernaum and, you know, Peter's house was there. So uh, they had, there's a little synagogue there is on the bar, Via Marius with the, the Roman road. So it was a bigger city. They were going there. So they cross over. That's the history. That's the story. Dig into a little bit of that so you get a feel in your head where this has happened to take place. It was now dark and Jesus had not come to them yet. The sea became rough and strong and the wind was blowing. They had rowed only about three or four miles. Now, remember, the, the Sea of Galilee itself, just really stretching across the middle, is only about seven, seven and a half miles wide. That's not very big. This is the sea we're talking about. It's only seven. If you live in on the Great Lakes, it's a speck. And it's only 14 miles long. So they were going across. But if you're rowing in a rowboat to row th- or, or a boat, a bigger boat with men in it, and your wind's coming against you, you go three or four miles, you're just worn out. So they were buffeted, one scripture says. They were buffeted, by the way. The J.B. Phillips says it this way. He says, uh, um, let's see, the following day, da 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 I thought I was in the right place here. The following day, the crowd who had remained on the other side of the lake noticed that there's only one boat there. Oh, in the evening, here we go, sorry. In the evening, his disciples went down to the lake and embarked on the boat and made their way across the lake to Capernaum. Darkness had already fallen. Jesus had not re- returned to them. Pretty close to, to what I just read you there. A strong wind sprang up and the water grew rough. They had rowed about three or four miles and then they saw Jesus walking on the water and coming towards the boat, and they were terrified. Yeah. I love a cold cotton patch version gospel that's a musical that um, Tom Key wrote, and he says, and Peter jumps up and says, it's a ghost! Or the biggest duck I've ever seen. And not to be sacrilegious, but if you're out in the boat at night and the wind's blowing and the clouds are coming up and you see someone come walking to you on the waves, you're not only terrified, when you grab your mental capacity, you become puzzled, but you become also awestruck. He walks to him. And of course, you know, in several other the Gospels, this is where he says to uh, Peter says, hey, I want to do that. The, John doesn't cover this story there. But uh, in Matthew, you can see where he says, Peter sees him coming and says, it's Jesus. He's walking on the water. And he and he says, uh, Lord, tell me to come out there. Like I talk about in middle school kids or even adults who, who have not lost their zeal for being excited. Carol, my, my wife is one of those people. She sees somebody doing something. She goes, hey, I want to do that. And I go, okay, here we go. Peter goes, I want to do that. And the other disciples, can you imagine? They're going like, come on, come on, Peter. Come on, Peter, Peter, Peter. Wrong time. Look, we're in the middle of the lake. It's, it's a storm. The wind's blowing. And that's Jesus, maybe. Well, maybe. And so anyway, Jesus, of course, in Matthew, read that account. It says, come on then. I love that. It's just as simple as he says, come. When you're telling this story to high school folks, which I've spent some time doing in my life, and, and middle schoolers and little kids, I'm saying, I want to do that. And so when the parent says, no, you get hurt. When the parent says, come on then. Let's make some safety measures here. But you come on. I want you to experience this. I want you to jump off that boat dock into the lake. I want you to jump off the boat house if it's not too high. Come on then. We're here in the water with you. Come on. So... Jesus walks to them, and when he gets to the boat, they fall down on their knees because they're terrified. And he says, it is I, don't be afraid. And John just cuts right to the chase. He says, well, they were glad to have him in a boat. They were glad to have him in the boat. And what happened? Immediately, they were at the land where they were going. And you just go, did it? Did they were so trying to get him in the boat or him stepping in the boat and Peter's down going like, oh no, get away from me. All that's in the Matthew version, the Luke version. And suddenly they realize, oh, 
we're, we're at the shore. Did it just happen like that? You see, anything can happen. When I tell this story to high school folks, uh, I always say, um, why did Jesus walk out to them on the water? And somebody will say, well, they, they were in trouble. Oh, okay. So he went at extreme lengths to help his friends just get out of a little bit of a jam. They could have, they, they could, they would have made it across. They weren't going to capsize. It wasn't the storm that he calmed another time. Also, the fact that when they got their senses together, they realized we've probably, this isn't the first time we've witnessed this or we're going to witness it again. It's going to happen. He's going to do things that we don't get. We just saw him turn food out of nothing, feed 5,000 people, and now he walks on the water. So you ask high school kids, why do you do that? Well, just, just, um, uh, Somebody's going to say, um, uh, it's mathematical. He was going to walk around from Bethsaida to Capernaum, so that's this far. But you know the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. I'll just walk across and get there at the same time they get there because I have to be with them in Capernaum. We made a plan to go there. So I'll just take the shortcut. So it's like it's like on college campuses. You never, You should never put sidewalks in until the college has operated for three or four years. Because if you do, you will let an architect, engineer, or a landscape design person put in these meandering, beautiful, around the flower beds, around the big oak trees, split the fountain, sidewalks, and all this concrete and grading. And then as soon as you get a, a couple rainstorms, people just go, uh-uh, I'm not wandering all the way over there by that. I'm going there. And so what happens is in the first year, all the paths are made to the shortest distance to the places. So if you wait for about two years to see where all the people walk, then you put your sidewalks in and they're in the right place. Learned that in camping, okay? Had a friend of mine who taught me that who said, I said, hey, we're going to put this sidewalk here. And he says, I'm not walking way over there. I'm going there. What if it's 20 degrees here one winter and it's snowing in my face? I'm from Minnesota. I moved down here to Western North Carolina. I'm just going into that door. I'm, I'm tired of being cold. And I go, you know, he's absolutely right. Just put it across through there, change your flower beds. Put a little step out through there for people who want to meander and see the insects or the bees. Or, but just, just cut a path. Jesus cuts a path. So somebody would always say that. Somebody would also say, oh, wait. Um, he could do it. That's why he did it. He could do it. And you look at that and you think, wow, what a great answer that is. Why'd you walk on the water? Because you could do it. You see, if you could walk on the water, when friends came over to your house today and you had a pool, what would you do? You would just deliver the hors d'oeuvres across the pool. Say, wait, hey, would you like an hors d'oeuvre? Oh, no, I'm, I'm coming around. No, I'm not. I'm just cutting across. If you walked across the pool, people would go, maybe we need to listen to this person. And then there's always someone in the crowd who I appreciate, especially when I'm telling this to, to kids. And someone says, uh, Jesus can do that. And you go, why can Jesus do that? And then somebody will connect the dots. People, this is about connecting the dots. Connecting dots is what you do in art. It's also what you do in stories. When you connect the dot, it's like this. <gasps> Jesus can do that because he is God. Want to know what God looks like? He looks like Jesus. Jesus, according to Colossians 1.15, says this. He's the visible expression of the invisible God. They're the one and the same. He's been trying to tell you this through the whole book of John. John's been trying to tell this, us that, the whole time he's been writing. And guess what else has happened? John's been trying to tell the religious leaders this forever. They get into, he gets into the boat and immediately the boat was on land. So what I thought I would just do is come in here. You see, I still had a little bit of that brown yellow tan in my brush i'm just going to let that go in there and be this uh this robe here maybe a little browner around the edge just because maybe this side's wet where the water splashed up on it um and so there's the start of this i'm going to come in here and create those hillsides just like i did earlier maybe which is a little spring green come in here just like this i'm using a big brush by the way i'm using a number seven um, uh, this is an American journey, number seven. So it's a nylon, um, interlock nylon, love these brushes. And then, uh, maybe just a little sky up there. 
and we'll just do a little sky hit just in there. Still had some green in it, but I don't care. It, it looks pretty cool, actually. And I think I want to do a little bit of this brown in there just along the edge of the hillside. That's too much, so watch what happens. I'm just going to go with a clean brush, and I'm going to take some of that out. You know, you can erase with a clean brush. And then I'm going to come in here with a little bit of this and create some water. Sea of Galilee is a bit blue-green. A little bit of this green gold would work well on that, I think. Just right in there, a little reflection, and a little more right in between here and the feet, right in there. And so I've got this little sketch that I did that's got some shots to it already. Look, I'm moving my brush around how I would if I were seeing these um, circles come out from what happens when you walk on water. I don't know what happens when you walk on water, but what happens when you throw a rock in the water? <laughs> so you can see how fast this little sketch comes together. And... Um, and it actually has the ability to look pretty decent. I'm, I don't even think I'm going, yeah, I'll take a couple of them out. I'm not even going to take all of the pencil lines out. And I did sketch this with a tad of a pencil. I'm going to come in with a little buff and just come right in here like this. And then maybe just a little bit of this brown and just create a little, um, just a little more darkness in the feet, I think, just than this here, here. Uh, a little dark skin, um, uh, and the reason is because, pretty obvious why the reason is because, well, um, one, just the, the land they lived in is sun. You know, you can use your, your sunscreen over there as a little olive oil. That works pretty well sometimes. You can actually, we've actually had guides in Israel give us a little bit of olive oil to put on our uh, back of your neck. <laughs> Pretty fun. All right, so there's there's the uh, there's the Jesus walking on the water, and um and so um, after this happens, um, he immediately, um, the next day, what happened was a lot of people who were, who had been fed. So follow your story. A lot of people who had been fed by Jesus and the disciples when he uh, gave them fish and bread, the five and two, what they gave what, what the little boy gave was multiplied. So they they maybe laid on the hillside, maybe covered up. Some, some stayed. But anyway, here's what the story continues like this. It says this. It says, uh, Well, the next day the crowd remained on the other side of the sea. Where they where There had been only one boat. And that, wait a minute, Jesus had not entered the boat with the disciples, but the disciples had gone away. Other boats from Tiberias came to the place where they had eaten bread after the Lord had given thanks. So the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, and they themselves got into boats, and they went looking for him. You bet they did. Hey, that guy just fed thousands of people with a little boy's lunch. Let's go find him. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And he didn't say, ah, I just walked across the lake. That was for his disciples to see. And for John to tell us later when he's looking into who this Jesus is. He's the very God who was the word, who is the word, who came as the word, who came to earth as the word, become flesh to live among us. God to say, this is not about your religious ideas. This is not about you creating rules and regulations for man to follow. This is about a relationship with you and God, and I'm the person that's going to connect that. I am God. I am, he says. Boop, enough. Don't even put anything else on it. I am. And so they're looking to figure out, Rabbi, when did you come here? He said, truly, truly, I say to you, you're seeking me not because you saw signs or because you ate your fill from the dinner, from the loaves. Nope. Do not work for food that perishes. Don't work for food that perishes. We spend all of our time trying to afford places to live and good ways to cook and eat. And when we're going like, yeah, that's important, but that's not the most important thing. But work for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For him, God the Father has set the seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? He said, this is the work of God. This is the work of God. And they're going like, what? And he says, that you believe me. 
You believe God sent me. You believe that I am. You believe that God and I are one. That's your work. When you get that work done first, then you understand the rest of the gospel where Matthew says, if you figure that part out, if you seek the kingdom first, everything else falls into place. You go, no, no, no. There's still suffering. Of course there is. We live in a broken world. There's still hurt. Of course there is. There's still evil. Of course there is. But you have the hope of who Christ is. Jesus answers them, this is the work of God that you believe in him who sent you. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe? And I read that in purpose like that. What sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. It is written, he gave them bread from the heavens to eat. We read about Moses. We know the law. We've read the books of the Torah. We know they had manna delivered every day. It fell on the ground. Manna. It's called, what is it? And they ate it. And, and he said, I'll give you a day's worth every day. Don't try to collect it. Put it in jars. It'll rot. Don't do it. Daily bread. Oh, wait. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus said to them, truly, truly. He says that like, hear me, hear me. It's the truth. I'm testifying it's the truth. Listen to this. Truly, truly, he says, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. Moses didn't do that. Moses may have asked and said, hey, our people are hungry out here. God says, I got that covered. I'll rain down dew and it'll harden up like bread. Eat it. It's good for you. What is it? Yeah, what is it? That's what we'll call it. What is it? But the Father gives you true bread from heaven for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread. I am the bread. Do you know that Bethlehem means house of bread? He was born in Bethlehem. House of bread. There is no little dot stroke, peace. There is nothing missing in God's story to tell the story the way he wants the story told. It all fits. And so it's a piece of art. For me, he walks on this. The next thing I'm going to draw here is probably just this little loaf of round bread that's just rolled up with some flour and a little bit of salt and some water, maybe not even salt, maybe just a little bit of seawater was put in there from maybe it came right out of the Sea of Galilee. Maybe this little wooden chalice here. And and now I have the bread of life talking about the bread of life. Let's see if I can just get some brown from right up there and paint this with it. Yeah, come on. Maybe I have to pick up a little bit here. Just a tad right here come in with a little bit of buff titanium, come in with a little bit of French gray, I love it, <laughs> and come in with a little bit of, of just some uh, titanium white, and I get this little, and then maybe just a touch of, uh, uh, maybe a couple more shadows of, of just different browns that I have here, there's a little brown down here, crusty bottom a little bit, roll that across like that, and this, this mug here is pottery, so it's going to have a little bit of that look to it also. Just a little pottery shard with a touch of brown on it right there. And so um, and so I am the bread of life. Now, why did I put a... I wrote on here because this... A couple times he refers to himself as the bread of life. A couple times I draw bread in different places. So when I turn to this, I know exactly what they're saying. Tell us, tell us who you are. We want to believe. So there's my drawings today on this page. I don't think I even need to write anything on this one. I know immediately um, that this is uh, John 6. I can look at this picture and tell you that's going to be, and, and I, it, boom, it's in my brain. I got it. I know where it is. I know what it is. Somebody says, hey, where's that story about where Jesus walks on the water? And I'm going to say John 6. 
And they go, I can't believe you can remember that. I can't. You know, well, I drew a picture about it. And so, um, so there is your, uh, there's your painting for today. And it's time for me to get out of here. Go change the oil in my coffee cup. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, then let's do a little bit on uh, art this morning on uh, Think Like an Artist for those of you who are on that. And then we'll go off and uh, celebrate a holiday. So give you a little idea right there. Maybe just a touch of this, uh, maybe a little bit of green right here under this. Just just a touch. You know, a person can never, it's hard to lay the brush down and quit, right? There we go. That gave it a little bit of a shadow. I like that. And then maybe come in here with another little. I like it. Not too shabby. Okay. Hey, blessings to you. I hope this is uh, helpful for you to uh, understand what it is that you're drawing and reading and realizing that uh, it's more than just learning to get to be a better artist. It's it's learning what life's all about. Why did Jesus walk across the water? Because he could. He was God. Wow. That's a good line to lead off with. Good headline. Good headline. Blessings to you all. It's good news. It's not my good news. It's the good news. Thanks for sitting in with me this morning. And uh, blessings to you. I'll see you. Next time, uh, next Tuesday, I'm going to be on the road. So I might just pop open my phone and jump on this page if I can. I don't know if I can or not, but I'll try that and see But I'll post something. Uh, I'm traveling, got to head over to Knoxville, see my son. And so I don't know if I will uh, be able to be on, but you go ahead. We're in John 6. If you get ahead of me, John 6 or 7, uh, you're, you would have some great time of, uh, here's where they start grumbling amongst themselves and arguing with him because he's about ready to, uh, to get into an argument with some more religious people here. Yeah. Do you ever think that what you did for a living was argue? I used to think that all the time. All right. Blessings to you. Bye. <laughs>